If you ever drive down Clark Avenue and reach the intersection with Quigley Road, you might notice two concrete foundation supports. These were two of the many that supported the Clark Avenue Bridge. The bridge spanned the Cuyahoga Valley, connecting Cleveland's east and west sides. But 60 years after it opened, it was closed permanently due to corrosive air pollution. The area of land below the Clark Avenue Bridge was originally a heavily forested wasteland except for three railroad lines. At the turn of the 20th century, Cleveland, Ohio was an up-and-coming industrial giant. The city was home to steel mills, blast furnaces, and many other industrial manufacturers. As a result, this land was sold for industrial use and to the railroads who expanded their rail yards. This area is known as the Upper Flats. Bordering on either side of the Upper Flats are Cleveland's Tremont and North Broadway neighborhoods. Both neighborhoods had a vast population of immigrants from European countries who worked in the rail and manufacturing industries. These two places were separated from each other by bluffs above the Upper Flats. Clark Avenue, which runs through Tremont, used to terminate at the top of the Western Bluff overlooking the Baltimore and Ohio's rail yard and industrial factories. There was no direct route for the some 3,000 immigrant workers to access their jobs in the Upper Flats. They had two options. The first was to take a train on the Baltimore and Ohio, and the second being to walk on foot over a local cow pasture path, the latter being almost impossible during the winter months. Clevelanders who lived in the neighborhoods on the Eastern Bluff could either take the train or go five miles out of their way by taking the Jefferson Street Bridge. Frustrated by this, Southside neighborhoods began urging Cleveland City Council to investigate extending Clark Avenue by building a bridge over the Upper Flats. The 7th District Improvement Association put Councilman William J. Springborn in charge of adopting a plan in December 1901. Plans for a $1.5 million bridge measuring 6,687 feet long were quickly drawn up by the city's engineer department. The structure would begin at the Eastern Bluff overhanging the Cuyahoga River where it then descended at a gentle slope across the river, railroads, factories, and connected with the Western Bluff. On September 9, 1903, a city resolution was adopted to issue bonds for the construction of the bridge in three sections. In August 1904, the Western Bluff was graded to form an approach from the south side to the industries. A temporary access road to the Cleveland Furnace Company was also added until the bridge could be completed. In 1909, a series of pony-through trusses was the first section of the bridge built over the B&O's rail yard. Soon after though, construction stalled. A bridge ordinance was created authorizing the issue of $900,000 worth of bonds which about $550,000 were sold. But not long after it went into effect, Cleveland started repealing bond ordinances with high interest rates. They claimed these bonds were unsaleable and wanted the bonds issued with lower interest rates and felt the remaining amount of money could be used elsewhere. The $350,000 worth of unsold Clark Avenue bridge bonds were repealed as a result. A special election was held on August 11, 1914 to issue the remaining $950,000 of bonds needed to cover the $1.5 million price tag of the bridge. Two-thirds of the votes were in favor of the new bonds. Construction of the two additional sections of the bridge began shortly after. The second section extended Clark Avenue to the Pony Through Trusses, and the last section connected with Pershing Avenue at the Eastern Bluff. An elevated Pratt Through Truss carried the bridge over the Cuyahoga River. All in all, 10,000 tons of structural steel, 100,000 yards of earth fill, 35,000 yards of concrete, 31,000 square feet of concrete piles, 200,000 tons of wooden piles, and 700 tons of reinforcing bars were used. It was Cleveland's longest bridge when it opened on October 24, 1917. The bridge deck was 56 feet wide with two 8-foot sidewalks and double streetcar tracks in the middle of the 40-foot four-lane road. There were two exit ramps in the middle so employees and trucks loading or receiving could easily access the Upper Flats. Clark Avenue Bridge helped the Upper Flats industries prosper tremendously. These companies were the Otis Steel Company, which was later purchased by the Jones & Lawland Steel Corporation, and the Corrigan McKinley Steel Company, later acquired by Republic Steel. In total, they had five industries in the Upper Flats. Ultimately, these steel companies are one of the things that led to the demise of the Clark Avenue Bridge. The burning of high sulfur coal and other corrosive fumes generated from the mills surrounding the bridge created acid rain, which caused severe corrosion issues. Things like bridge girders were eaten away and chunks of concrete were also falling off damaging steel mill equipment. 
Many people who traveled across the bridge have said it was intimidating. Smoke and flames would belch from the steel mills, causing a reddish-orange glow in the sky around the bridge. Not only was it scary, the sulfur-ridden air smelled putrid. This pollution eventually spread to the neighborhoods on either side of the bridge, causing laundry hanging outside and clothing lines to turn orange. The pollution became so bad during the steel mill's peaks in the 1970s that it was photographed and featured in the Environmental Protection Agency's DocuMerica program in 1973. Unlike other bridges in Cleveland, the county and state were responsible for maintaining bridges. Clark Avenue was the sole responsibility of Cleveland and rehabilitation projects had to be undertaken in 1946, 1957, and 1967. However, by the 1970s, the bridge was deteriorating faster than repairs could be made. In March 1978, the south sidewalk was closed after a huge chunk of it fell below into the valley, leaving the nearby sidewalk hanging loose. A reduced load weight for trucks and buses had also been implemented earlier in the 1970s, but on March 20th, 1978, they were banned altogether. Clark Avenue Bridge was closed forever on October 16th, 1978. The dismantling of the bridge was a long and delicate process. The construction firms had to work around equipment from the steel mills and could not disrupt their around-the-clock work. There were also numerous pipes containing natural gas, steam, fuel, oxygen, water, electricity, and coke gas. If any were damaged, it could cause an explosion. The construction firms even had to take out a $100 million catastrophe insurance policy. In November 1980, the eastern portion of the bridge began being dismantled and was later completed in May 1981. On January 14th, 1985, the Pratt Through Truss, the last standing section of the bridge, was dynamited into the river. An estimated $50 million bridge replacement for Clark Avenue was pondered by the city of Cleveland after it closed. Ultimately, it never happened because workers found alternative routes to the steel mills and Interstate 490 was under construction at the time. It was completed in 1990 and connects between I-90 and I-77, a short distance north of Clark Avenue. Today, Clark Avenue slopes down 1,900 feet where it ends and meets Quigley Road. Many of the concrete bridge piers were left in place, leaving it as the only remaining evidence of what once directly linked Cleveland's east and west side neighborhoods.